All right, here's a look at the odds for Canada versus Slovenia for Wednesday's quarterfinal. Uh, brought to you by FanDuel. Canada, an eight and a half point favorite to beat Slovenia. And uh, in the World Cup, Canada's won four of their five contests. Uh, their lone loss coming against Brazil. Uh, pretty exciting time for Canada basketball. Here is our TSN basketball reporter, Josh Lewenberg. Canada has officially qualified for Paris 2024, Josh. So with everything that was on the line for Canada and the deficit in this game and the way they played last game and their coach calling them out, could this have been the biggest win in Canadian national team history? Well, I can say with certainty it was the biggest win in the last 20 years for sure. Now, it kind of felt like when a pro sports team does something for the first time in a while or just does something it's never done before. I'm not going to compare it to the Raptors winning the championship, but remember the Raptors ending their playoff drought in 2014 or winning their first seven game series in like almost two decades. Similar to that, but what this moment had that the others that I just mentioned didn't is that it was more personal to everyone involved, players, fans, because this is the national team. The guys didn't get drafted by this team or traded to this team. They're not getting paid millions of dollars to pay for this team. They're doing it for the love of their country, for national pride. And that's what made it special. And you could see that, especially with guys like Dwight Powell and Kelly Olynyk. These are guys that were showing up before it became the thing to do, before it became popular. And they've experienced a lot of the disappointment and the heartbreak. And speaking of those things, I think that's what made it special for long-suffering fans of this program. Because like a lot of people, I was feeling some deja vu towards the end there. It was starting to follow a familiar script where Canada blows that game against Brazil. It looked like they were about to do the same against Spain, but then something crazy happened, Jay. They finally got it done when they needed to get it done. So, yeah, it, it did seem like that sigh of relief, monkey off the back type of moment. And the, the big names, uh, the big names of today, the Dylan Brookses, the Shea Gilgis Alexanders, is those guys really stepped up against Spain, and especially SGA. I mean, this is a real star player that Canada has and 13 of his 30 points in the fourth quarter. So it's like your star player really coming up clutch when you absolutely need him to, Josh. And so much is made of what Shea has done to elevate the program, and believe me, he's done a lot to elevate the program, but looking at the other way around as well is where I think this experience has been really good and will continue to be really good for Shea. I mean, given what was at stake in this game and the fact that he's only played in 13 playoff games in the NBA in his career and none beyond the first round, you can make the argument that this was the biggest game of his life, of his career. And it shouldn't surprise anyone that he rose to the occasion. This is one of the most clutch players on the planet right now. So yeah, for Canada, it's been such a luxury to be able to go into every game, at least to this point, and say, We've got, without question, the best player on the floor. Not sure they're going to be able to say that against Luka and Slovenia, but even still, you've got a guy like that, you feel good about going into battle every night. He, he's a true superstar in every sense of the word. And Josh, we know they're going to Paris now. We know they're going to the Olympics. The question is, is this the squad they're going to have, or is this success going to maybe allow them to hopefully bring on a couple other players who aren't with them right now. I'm thinking of the Jamal Murrays of the world, the Andrew Wiggins of the world. Do you feel like this success will maybe bring some more players into the fold as we head to Paris next year? No, they used to have to beg guys to come and play for them. I don't think that's going to be the case next summer. But I do think the roster decisions are going to be really interesting next summer. Uh, of course, in an effort to manufacture some of that chemistry and continuity that they've been lacking, remember, Canada asked all of their players to commit to three summers. They basically said, okay, well, the guys that make the commitment are going to get first dibs on roster spots, and everybody else can come and try out for any spots they have remaining, and they stuck to their guns this summer. I know a couple of NBA guys who weren't able to participate last summer called them up and expressed interest in playing this summer, and they were basically told, thanks but no thanks, we're sticking with our guys. Now, I would expect them to be more inclined to make an exception next summer for the Olympics, but I don't know, maybe not, because, yeah, while it would be really difficult to say to Andrew Wiggins, well, 
thanks but no thanks if he does come calling and I do think a lot of guys are going to be interested in playing assuming that they're healthy but I know that Canada basketball has a strong sense of loyalty and appreciation for the guys that helped them get here so this is a good problem to have having a, a ton of NBA quality players that want to play for you but I do think it, it's going to be a tough decision for the program to make good problem to have I like the way you put that Josh Lewinberg uh, team Canada against Luka Doncic and Slovenia Wednesday in the quarterfinals at the FIBA World Cup Josh thanks for this